Hey, America, it's the moment you've been waiting for. Donald Trump, the GOP frontrunner. We're going to go deep into the candidate and the candidacy with Donald Trump for the full 30 minutes on Cashing In. Let's go right now. So, Donald, within hours, if not minutes, of the tragedy in, in Oregon, the, the community college tragedy, President Obama took to a microphone and he said we should be politicizing tragedies like that. Is he wrong? It's really wrong. You know, he's been the great divider. I've been saying it. Other people have been saying it. He has truly been, as you know, the great divider. And it's just more of the same. And he's using it for his own purposes, having to do with guns. Not a big Second Amendment man, to put it mildly. And the truth is, this stuff is going to happen. I was on a show this morning. I said, this is going to happen, whether we like it or not. People are going to slip through the cracks. They're mentally ill. There's a huge mental illness problem. And it's very sad. When you look at it, it's very sad, Eric. So, so what's what do going you do? on? How do you, how do you, you know, you know murder by gun has, has plummeted. The rate has plummeted over the last 20 years. Right. But the mass shootings haven't. Is there a way to tackle that? Go back thousands of years and go forward thousands of years. People are going to slip through the cracks. It's a mental illness problem. You can certainly make areas better like New York City and so many other areas where they've let go a little bit and then in some cases let go a lot. But How? even How you if you do that, let's say, you, you know, usually these guys are loners, nobody wants to talk to them, but you know, they've got a lot of problems. And what are you going to do, put somebody in jail because he fits, or put them in an institution, institutionalize somebody because he fits the mold of somebody that could do this? So you're going to have problems. It's not even politically correct to say it, but no matter how well you do guns no guns whatever you do you're going to have mental illness and you're going to have these some these are, things happen Donald, some are suggesting that maybe people who allow people with mental illness to get access to a gun whether they give it to them sell it to them or or just allow them access should be or could be prosecuted well you know it's all true and everything's fine but no matter what whether you don't give them guns they're going to get guns they're going to get there are right now 200 to 300 million guns out there they're going to get guns it's not a gun problem it's a mental illness it problem. To be a no, uh, no gun zone a gun free zone as well and uh, that was a gun free zone another one let's spit a little bit to uh, foreign policy What's and by the way yeah. if they had guns in the school they may have been able to stop them before he did all this damage just so you understand yeah, I do that understand. was a gun free zone the only one that had a gun was him in fact, they had three of them. So if they had guns in the school, maybe they would have come out a lot better than they did. The police or whoever did a pretty good job of stopping them fairly early. But a gun-free zone, he had the only gun. Target-rich environment, they call it. That's that. not good. A little, a little pivot to foreign policy. Um, President Putin has decided to do airstrikes in, in Syria. Now, you've in the past said he's Putin is a good leader. Have you changed Why your Why do say he's a good leader? I say he's a leader. Okay. He's respected, unlike our president. I didn't say he's a good leader. I don't take any issue with good, bad, or indifferent. But he's certainly a respected leader. He's respected in his country. He's actually liked in his country, which is hard to believe, because he's essentially a dictator. And he's actually liked in his country. They do polls that are done by our companies, not even done by him. And I think he has an 80% approval rating, which is, you know, any politician in this country would love to have. The truth is that he is uh, strong, and he's tough, and he's making our president look very bad. You know who else did maybe this week? And a lot of people are saying Bibi Netanyahu went to the UN, looked strong, looked tough. He did a and terrific again, job. made our president look bad. So now we have a Putin, a Netanyahu. What's going on? Well, I thought his 45 second little delay during the speech was amazing. I'd never seen that before. And Bibi, what he did was terrific. It's a horrible deal for Israel, the Iran deal, a horrible deal for us. It should never have been made. And one of the reasons Iran now is getting involved with Russia is because they're a wealthy country. We've made them a wealthy country. They're going to have nuclear weapons. And they're going into Syria now. We gave them $150 billion. So the whole experience of watching what took place over the last couple of years with the Iran deal is just, to me, unbelievable. I cannot believe they did that deal. So now we have Bibi Netanyahu, Vladimir Putin, Barack Obama, and Donald Trump, four leaders, you want to rank those in order of leadership skills? Well, I won't include myself because I think that would be uh, inappropriate. But certainly our president would rank last. The other two are both doing a good job. I mean, they're both doing a good job for their respective countries and also the way they represent. But they're both leaders, whether we like that or not. And I think Bibi is doing a really good job. I thought his speech was absolutely terrific. All right. Um, the refugee crisis that's happening because of Syria, the, a lot of refugees are going throughout Europe, but recently I think the number went from 3,000 to 10 or so thousand in America. We may take as much as 200,000. 
Your thoughts? So I heard about three weeks ago when I saw the migration, as they call it, and they were talking about 3,000 people coming here. And, you know, you say, who are they? Where are they coming from? Do they have papers? But, you know, 3,000 people. And you can sort of say, well, maybe we should do on a humanitarian basis. Then I heard 10. Then I heard 25. Now I'm hearing 200,000 people. And, Eric, if you look at this migration, it's mostly men. And they look like young men and strong men. And they look like fighters. The first thing I said is, why aren't they fighting for their own country, Syria, if it's Syria, if they, in fact, even come from Syria? Then I said, how are we going to take 200,000 people? This could be one of the great military coups of all time. If they send them to our country, young, strong people, and they turn out to be ISIS. Now, probably that won't happen. But some of them definitely, in my opinion, will be ISIS. A and military, I say, what can we, we talk doing? about that for a second? Yeah. Military coup. A Trojan well, horse. This could be like a Trojan horse. I mean, this could be a Trojan horse in a sense. 200,000 people coming into the United States, and let's say a lot of them would be ISIS, and they come in here and we're totally unprepared for it. In addition to which, we owe $19 trillion. We're a debtor nation. We, we're messed up. Everything's wrong. Our infrastructure, everything's bad. So I said, absolutely, you shouldn't. And then I said, look, Obama wants to bring 200,000 people here. And I said, if I win the election, they are going back. They're going back. Now, we can do free zones, we can do safe zones, we can do zones in Syria where we put people, and I think, frankly, that's what everybody should be doing, because Germany's now going to be a mess, and a lot of these other countries. And interestingly, the Gulf states aren't doing anything. They have tremendous money, they're not accepting anybody, and they're right there. So we have a big problem in this country. Is there a problem, Donald, that, that Russia said they wanted to fight ISIS, and so they're helping Bashar al-Assad fight ISIS, but it turns out they may be dropping bombs on the Free Syrian Army? Well, I actually think they're going to fight ISIS also, because they don't want ISIS going into Russia. So I think, but I think in the meantime, they're fighting and they're doing something for Assad. Now, with all of that being said, Assad's a bad guy. But we don't know who we're fighting for. We're fighting for rebels. If you look at what happened with Gaddafi and Saddam Hussein and all of the people, we're going to replace all these people with these wonderful people. Well, Libya is a total mess. Iraq is a total mess after we spent two trillion and thousands of lives. Two trillion dollars, thousands of lives, wounded warriors all over the place. And what do we have? We have nothing. We have absolutely nothing. And what happened is what I predicted in 2003, 2004. We shouldn't have gone in there. But Iran is taking over Iraq. It's as simple as that. And they're taking over among the largest oil reserves in the world. And ISIS has the oil also from different sections. So I would say we probably have the dumbest and worst foreign policy maybe in the history, certainly in the history of our country. You said they, they may be, uh, ISIS may be laughing at us. Oh, they're laughing at us. They think we're extremely stupid people. Assad is laughing at us. Hey, Assad is fighting ISIS. We come along, Assad's supposed to be our enemy, but we're bombing ISIS. So Assad is probably writing a thank you letter to President Obama. What's going on? All right, a, a little bit of uh, politics, we'll bring it back home a little bit. Ben Carson made a comment a couple of weeks ago, I think it was two weeks ago, who, he said, if I were going to vote for an American president, he or she would have to declare the Constitution um, superior to Sharia law. He got a lot of flack for it, but he raised a lot of money with that comment as well. I think he put up $20 million in the quarter. Your thoughts on, on that? Well, I watched him, and he took it back a little bit, I guess. And frankly, a lot of people didn't necessarily think what he said was so bad. You know, we are a country where religion's not supposed to enter into it. You run, you go through the process, you win, you're the president of the United States. But he certainly took a lot of flack. Well, would, you, no would, you, uh, would you want the president or, if you, or candidate to say, I will promise to uphold the Constitution over the Sharia law? The, uh, well, I, I think it's an doctor. argument I don't want to get into. It's not my argument. So I'll, it's an argument that I won't get into. Okay. Maybe I can find an argument you might get into. Yeah. we got to take a quick break. But when we come back, Donald Trump will stay with us for the full show. When we come back, he's going to talk about his tax plan and a special visit I got from one Jeb Bush recently. We're going to weigh in on all that in just a minute.